Hi there and welcome back to the Nourishing Roots channel. In this week's episode I'm going to be doing a bit of a different video and it's going to be a top 12 tips on how to cope with flying anxiety. Now the reason I'm doing this video is because at 6am tomorrow morning I'll be making my own way down to the airport and travelling on a nine hour long haul flight on a virgin plane to Orlando, Florida. Now don't get me wrong, but this is a holiday of a lifetime and I'm really, really looking forward to it, but I am not looking forward to the flight because as some of you may or may not know, I am absolutely petrified of flying. And I know many of you out there are as well, especially if you might have clicked on this video link. And in my experience, flying can be, you know, a great opportunity, but the fear of flying can be absolutely debilitating. Now, thankfully, I know I've gotten myself to a calm enough stage to be able to travel on a plane, but it's taken me a good few years to get to this point. So I thought today I'd share with you some of my top favourite tips on how to stay calm on your flight and travel well so ultimately you can get over your fear of flying and eventually have a trip of a lifetime as well. Because let's face it, when you can't fly, your life becomes so much more limited in terms of the things that you're able to do, especially if there's so many other parts of the world that you want to visit. So without further ado, let's get down with my top 12 tips for dealing with travel anxiety. My first tip, surprisingly, given what Nourishing Roots is all about, is to make sure that you spend some time for self-care the night or day before you travel. So today I've scheduled a full day away from work responsibilities to simply make sure that I have everything I need. I put the heating on so I can make a really nice bath. I've got a nice bath bomb, I've got all my skincare routine rituals set up for the evening. And I've also scheduled in some time to do a little bit of yoga and some stretching. And I'm also going to be watching a good series of Friends, which is one of my favourite sitcoms in the world, just to calm me down and put me in that nice, safe, loving space so that I'm not going to sleep with my head whirling around at 100 miles an hour thinking that, you know, tomorrow I might be 33,000 feet up in the air. Now, if this sounds like you as well and you're a bit of a warrior on an evening, I can't state enough how important it is to make sure that the night before you travel, you're well rested, you've, you know, eaten well, you've had a good night's rest, and also you've taken some time for you. Because there's nothing worse than setting yourself up to fail on a trip by not packing, doing everything last minute, and making your anxiety levels go through the roof. So the number one tip here is to take some time for self-care, no matter what that might look like for you. My tip number two is to, in the morning of when you're travelling, is to make sure that you've got everything nicely set up for the morning of travel. So that means making sure you've got your taxi booked maybe to take you to the airport. You have your clothes set out for you on the bed or on a nice little hanger where you'll normally put your makeup on, you might want to have all your little makeup things set out or your skincare routine to already be set out. And that way, you know you can literally just wake up engaging a nice little easy ritual before you take off to go and get your plane. And it kind of centers you a little bit too before you go on and embark on your traveling journey. Because for myself, I love to just wake up, have everything kind of laid out so I don't have to do any really long thinking or panic. I just know that I've got my nice clothes to wear. I know that they're gonna be comfortable, they're gonna be cozy for the plane. And I also know that I've also got all my travel documents with me, which is something I'll touch upon in a little moment. My tip number three is to arrive at the airport a little bit earlier than you normally would. So on average, I'd say most people aim to get to the airport at least two hours before they travel. But what I'd recommend if you do suffer from travel anxiety, like myself, is to arrive two and a half to three hours earlier than normal. So what that would mean is booking a taxi a little bit earlier, making sure you can beat the traffic, get through all those check-in lines, go through security, all the annoying bits that no one really likes. So you can go through duty-free, you can go and get some food before you go on the plane. You might want to also look out the window at the planes and notice how many come in and out on a regular basis. 
so you can begin to feel more comfortable in the environment of an airport and get yourself in the mode of thinking, you know what, I'm here to go on holiday, have a great time, and although I'm going to have to get on a plane soon, that's not what my holiday is all about. Eventually, I'm going to be in a place that's really nice and able to enjoy my holiday. Overall, tip number three is to arrive at the airport early. Make sure that you're calm enough while you're there so you can do things that you like and not have to rush around and making your anxiety levels shoot through the roof. But get there early enough where you can just literally chill out, get out a book, buy yourself a magazine, and hey presto, you'll definitely be in a better mood for when you step on the plane. My tip number four is my favourite tip of all because it involves food. So tip number four is to make sure that you bring a lot of snacks with you on the plane and also for the airport, regardless of whether you have in-flight meals available on your flight. So for myself, I know when I take food with me and I have snacks to hand, that makes me feel so much more calmer because I know I can eat when I want to without worrying whether the flight attendants are coming around with my meal yet. And also, it's a great distraction technique. And I like to also set out, you know, various times that I'll eat throughout the day. So I've got something to look forward to. So for example, if I'm tomorrow taking off at 10 a.m., I'll make sure that I've got like an 11's snack to look forward to with a nice cup of tea while I'm on board. I'll also have a little travel mug to take with me where I can fill it up with tea, coffee or some water so I can stay hydrated and have a lovely little read of a magazine while I have a snack. So to touch a little bit more on the snacks that I'll be taking this time, I'll show you what I'm going to be bringing with me. So right here I have a few energy dense snacks that are going to keep me well fueled on the plane. One is a deliciously Ella flapjack bar in the apple raisin and cinnamon flavour which I absolutely love. Love anything flapjacky because it, it's really easy to eat, you can dip it in your tea as well. If you're British like me and love Dunkin' Biscuits or you love flapjacks, this is a really nice energy dense snack to take. Um, I've also got a bounce ball in the peanut flavour. This is my favourite flavour because I absolutely love peanut butter and although this isn't necessarily peanut butter, it has that kind of taste to it. And again, it's really energy dense. I love the texture of these, they're quite chewy and they take me a little while to eat so I know they're going to help distract me while I'm on the plane. Next is a naked bar. So these are not really that energy dense snacks. I mean. They're good for like a little in-between snack, like I could eat two of these no problem in one go. But the chocolate orange flavour is so nice and it really does taste like Terry's chocolate orange. If you've ever tried Terry's chocolate orange, oh, so, so good. My next one is actually a new snack that I literally tried today, which is, is again by the Make Bounce, but this is in the vanilla and, um, what was it, vanilla and date flavour. Yeah, it's basically like a date and nut bar, but it's got a really kind of vanilla essence to it that's quite natural. So I tried one of these this morning with a cup of coffee, and you know what, guys? It is so nice. I'll definitely be buying these again. They've got like a really nice chewy texture, a bit like the peanut ball that I just showed you. And finally, my next snack is a kind of a bit of a meal replacer option if there's nothing that I like on the plane. So I'll have this with something else, obviously, not just this on its own, because that just wouldn't be a meal, but it, worst case scenario, the meal is awful. I've uh, brought along a Cliff Bar. If anyone else has tried Cliff Bar, they're kind of an American type snack bar, but they've come over to the UK relatively recently over the last few years. And um, crunchy nut butter flavour is my favourite. These are really energy dense, full of packed flavours that are just out of this world and Again, I love to dunk it in a cup of tea because, as again, I'm British, that's what I do. But because I've babbled on about snacks, let me now move on to tip number five. Tip number five is all about distraction, 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 distraction. So if you know you're a bit anxious while you're on a plane or beforehand, then bring something along with you that's going to take your mind off the actual fact that you're flying or about to take off or land. So when I'm sat in an airport, what I love to do is I'll have a little walk around WH Smith, which is kind of a magazine bookstore. I'll pick a lovely magazine to read. 
Um, I'll also, the night before that I travel, I'll download some music and podcasts onto my phone. So I have things to just put in my ears, shut off completely from the sound of the aeroplane because that annoys me. I also have, oh yes, I've also took a book with me this time um, to read. So I'll aim to read that by the end of the flock. Florida, <laughs> the end of the holiday in Florida. I also have a little puzzle book to take with me. It has some Sudoku puzzles in, some word searches. Again, purely for distraction techniques. This is something I don't really do at home. And another good distraction technique is, if you have a partner or a friend flying with you, is to play the ABC game. So if you haven't heard of the ABC game, I don't know if I made this up or it's just a really old school game, is that you pick a topic before you fly or take off. For us, this is usually biscuit varieties, it could be chocolate varieties, or it could be a theme such as Harry Potter, Disney, which would be really relevant considering where we're going to tomorrow. And what you do is you go through the, every letter of the alphabet and try and come up with a word that's related to your topic. And it just gets your mind thinking on something that isn't about planes. My advice here would be is to have a little scavenge around, see what things calm you down in terms of distraction tools, whether that's colouring, reading, listening to an audio book, getting some music on, buying some noise cancelling headphones if you can afford them, just anything to just take your mind off travelling. My next tip, which is tip number six, is to do things on the plane that are quite calming, grounding and centering. So this can be a variety of things, but for me, what I like to do is travel with a lot of little self-care activities. Um, one of those is going through my whole makeup routine and also my whole kind of skincare routine as well. So what I like to take, if you just bear with me, in my clear plastic bag, um, this one was just actually from Primark and it has the letter M on for Marissa, I like to take some things like moisturiser, have my have some skin oil, some rosehip oil in there, and I also have some toner, um, which is kind of like a, a fresh uh, rose water toner. That's just from Lush. And all sorts of other little things in there that I use for my cleansing and toning routine that I normally have at home, just in travel size. And what that allows me to do is that even though I already have makeup on before I get on the plane, I can then have an excuse to take it all off, make sure that I'm, you know, feel nice and fresh and I'm keeping myself moisturised while I'm on the plane, which can also be annoying because it's really dry up there. So it's really important to keep yourself moisturised. And just the activity itself, it just again acts as a good distraction, a bit of a self-care tool. And even if my anxiety levels are right up here, like I can guarantee without a doubt, by doing my little skincare routine, it really, really lowers it. Um, by the same token, after I've done my little skincare routine, I am yet to buy a mask, but I will then buy a nice skincare mask to place over my face. And even though it looks absolutely ridiculous, again, it helps to make me feel really calm. Another little technique around self-care on a plane is to buy yourself some relaxing essential oil. Now this again can go on your travel on in a nice clear bag, but what this does, I'll just show you, is it's like you can get little roll-ons. Um, this one has lavender, lemon oil, and I think it has neroli, so you can just place it on your pulse points. It can be on your neck, just at the lower part of the neck, and all that does is it sends this really nice wave of essential oils right to your brain and it allows you to feel more relaxed and calm and centered because this is really good just for relaxing anyway. So my next tip, which is tip number eight, is all about breathing. So I really, really believe that many of us, including myself, really underestimate the power of your breath. So when I'm flying, what I can sometimes do without even noticing is start to hyperventilate because my cortisol levels, which is kind of the hormone in the body that causes like a lot of stress and anxiety and makes you feel an edge, can be really, really high. But breathing, and particular types of breathing, can help to bring those cortisol levels back down and stimulate a relaxing response in the body rather than the fight or flight response. So breathing techniques that can be really, really helpful if you suffer from anxiety can be two things. The four-part breath, and what that is, is 
inhaling and pausing and exhaling for the same amount of time. It's also called the boxed breathing method. So what you can do is inhale for three or four, pause and hold the breath, exhale for three or four, and pause and hold the breath. And just continue in that motion for a few cycles, just until you feel a little bit calmer, or you can continue for as long as you want. Similarly, another breathing technique, which is even more simple, is to simply inhale for your normal breath, but then on the exhale, try to elongate the exhale. So if you normally breathe in for a count of two, exhale for a count of four, or even five, or just as long as feels comfortable. And again, all that does is activate the sympathetic nervous system in the body, but the parasympathetic nervous in the body actually, which again is responsible for calming you down. And it's really easy, you don't need to pay anything for this. You already have it available and it's a great little sneaky tool for just making you feel a little bit calmer. My tip number nine is to make sure that you're well hydrated while you are flying. Because as I mentioned before, being on a plane is a not the best place for feeling minty fresh. But the air conditioning on a plane literally zaps the moisture from your skin. But what you can do to help prevent that from happening or from it to have any damaging effects on your body and also increasing your level of anxiety, funnily enough, is to just make sure that you're drinking enough, enough water regularly. You might want to order a few hot drinks while you're up on the plane. And also a key one for me is to just keep moisturising with just a little pea-sized amount just to kind of rub on your face, which is also a relaxing thing to do. But yes, you can do anything to just make sure that your skin's hydrated enough so you don't feel really lethargic and drained when you come off the plane and thus end up getting even more jet lagged than you might do if you had kept hydrated. My tip number 10 is to set yourself up a little ritual before you even get on the plane. So you might want to have a little set out a diary kind of list that you want to do before you get on the plane. So I'll give you mine. Um, what I like to do is I'll go and get myself a nice decaf coffee from Starbucks, I'll go and get my new magazine out, I'll read a few pages of that, I'll do one of my puzzles in my puzzle book, I'll go for a nice little wander around the airport and the duty free section and I'll just make sure that I have my own little grounding rituals just to you know, become a little bit more centred as I mentioned before and to just get my headspace in the right place. Because the last thing I want is for my mind to be worrying about what actually goes on while you're flying on a plane and sparking off potentially a panic attack. So do whatever little nice ritual that you want and make a little safe space of your own. And my next tip is to make sure that you tell someone that you're feeling anxious if you feel anxious. So for me, I often tell my partner who I'm travelling with, just in case I do feel any anxiety, then they can reassure me. And another really good point to make about telling someone that you're feeling anxious is to let the flight attendants know. Now, this might seem a little bit embarrassing, but from my experience, that's what they're there for. And they'll definitely be more than happy to help. And if you do experience something where you feel a little bit tense or anxious or you experience a bit of turbulence, then they can really help to just calm you down, um, you know, distract yourself, do anything that they feel is beneficial for you while you're on that flight. Because let's face it, flight attendants go up and all around multiple countries, various times in the day, the evening, and they are still okay. And you know what? I'm sure they've suffered from some form of travel anxiety at some point in time. So they're more than well qualified to help you deal with yours. And in my final tip, my most important tip is to remember why you're flying. So in the heat of getting anxious and worried and, you know, panicking that we're going on a plane, we can forget about the reasons why we're there in the first place. So what I like to do is kind of think forward and remember all the amazing things that I'm going to be able to do once I land on the other side. So for me tomorrow, that is going to be Orlando, Florida, Disney World. And that has been a trip of a lifetime for absolute years. So if, like me, you're planning a holiday of a lifetime or even somewhere that's one hour away or even less than that, just know the facts of how many amazing things that you'll be doing, even if it's simple as meeting a friend or a family member to do something fun. 
and don't let the flying make a misery of your holiday. Like it's such a small amount of time that you're going to be on a plane compared to what you're going to do on your holiday. And it's not worth not getting on a plane or not dealing with your flight anxiety to let that fall by the wayside and not be able to travel. Like in this day and age, traveling is such a privilege. So try and overcome your fear as best as you can. It is going to be hard and it does take time. And believe me, at one time I wouldn't even dare look at a plane because I was literally that fearful of them. But now through using these coping techniques and getting some help and support on board, I'm a little bit happier with flying. I'm not 100%, but let's face it, who is? So with those tips in mind, I am wishing you an absolutely amazing holiday. I'm gonna wish good luck for myself for tomorrow and to get underway with my own little self-care routine. But if you've liked this video, please get a, give it a little like below, or if you like this channel in general, please hit the subscribe button. And you can even comment below to just recommend some of your own self-care tips or tips that have helped you to overcome flight anxiety, because I would love to hear about them. So in the meantime, it's a goodbye from me, and I hope you have a great week, and I will speak to you very soon. Bye.